Welcome to the Whiskey Roundtable. We are your hosts. Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doc Dunbar. What's up, kids? How are we doing? How are we doing today? How's everybody's week going? Oh, it's going pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. My week went just okay. Doing... It's today. I think it's the rain. It's just making me like... Yeah. Just want to curl up on the couch with a blankie and... It's a bit of a rata today. I just want to curl up on the couch with a couple of 25-year-olds. In a long, oh, I'm sorry, honey. I didn't realize you're on the show. <laughs> hey, if, if they can handle you, probably more not. power to you, girls. Probably not. <clears throat> That's okay. Well. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. Anywho, so um, still working at home for me. I, you know, you're transitioning. Yeah, three days That's in the up. office. That's by my choice. Right. Um, I got to get out of the house. Can't take it. I just can't take it. And gee, you've never worked at home. So. I never worked at home, no. He never worked. Oh, you could have just, <laughs> just kidding, just oh, kidding, honey. No, sorry, right. I don't do anything. Stay home, yeah, play so. video games. That was your payback for the twenty-five. Year watch, old. watch, you all. That's right. You know. so, yeah, I just do a little more like my reading than basket. I ever used to do. You do more reading or weeding? Yeah. Reading. Oh, you know, okay. He does weeding and reading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I recently just read this study about... He's uh, by handicap. <laughs> read this study that found out that women who carry a little extra weight are actually live a lot longer than the men who mention it. <laughs> <laughs> you just wrote that shit too, didn't you? <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my God. So uh, we continue with uh, this. Well, it's our last show uh, in August, and so it's our last show on um, single Scotch. malt. Scotch uh, whiskey month, this sorry. is it, and kids. I think tonight um, it's you couldn't be more fitting than concluding Scotch whiskey month with the Lafroig 18. Lafroig 18, man. You want to take that to the camera? So, I mean, Do it's I nice. To? It's nicely showing in the boot there. You want this? I'll show this. Yeah, you can show that. Yes, yeah, so this is a very special whiskey. Um, Oh, we'll talk more about it later, but sure. it is, it's not it's not your everyday single malt. Let's put it at that. So, no. and then we uh, just a note: uh, we'll be off for the next two weeks, and so we'll be back with you all on September eighteenth. Right. And then um, we'll be back doing some our good old American whiskeys again, and uh, then we have uh, Chris Snyder here on this, the twenty fifth of September again. And uh, we'll be discussing the Whiskey Rebellion, so which will also be the topic of the Whiskey Wizard for that week. So, cool. So those are some things coming up. So what are you smoking, G? I'm smoking a new Rocky Patel cigar called. If I hope if I don't mess up the the name, but uh, I, I'm going to say it's Tavishas. I'm sorry, Tavis Tavacosa. That's Ta it. I don't know. T-A-V-I-C-U-S-A. Yeah, it's a Maduro cigar. comes in three different sizes. It's a uh, Nicaraguan long filler with a uh, Mexican binder and uh, wrapper as well. So uh, I'm about uh, three-sixteenths into it. I'll let you know how it is as the show goes. So that's okay. what I'm smoking. Sweet. I've never seen you uh, smoke that one before. Uh, it's a brand new cigar out. So yeah. I was... Uh, Gracious that uh, my people think of me and they uh, send me new things uh, to try. So my people. Good. My peeps. I got peeps, you know. Just peeps. saying. Oh, dear. Uh huh. So, what'd you guys do this week? Anything exciting? Work. I, I ran my dupe off. Had a lot of. So, my, my brother in Texas is. Uh, uh, we're packing his stuff up tomorrow. Thanks. Uh, and Sunday. Thank you very much. And uh, we're going to, uh, so we've been working on that this week. I had to get re get the dismantle the rest of the gym downstairs and I shipped that to my nephew for his new gym and uh, 
I helped a very, very good friend of mine that uh, I consider a cousin. We, I went uh, this week to in the, in the evening to pull out a washer and dryer out of the basement and put his new washer and dryer in the basement. Got all that done. That's not and fun. I uh, uh, unloaded uh, 2,500 pounds of stone out of the back of my pickup truck. Is that when you were hungover? No, that was when I, oh my God. So uh, last week, <laughs> last week Friday after the show, we went outside. I didn't eat. I literally had a breakfast sandwich. And I went to bed about 12 o'clock. I felt fine. I didn't feel like I was... Nice fire outside. We had. We, mm-hmm. we sat outside by the fireplace. It's and, nice. Uh, uh, it's great. And uh, I went to bed. I woke up and I was like, oh my God, I'm hungover. But I didn't feel like I drank that much. But I had to, on Saturday, I bought a... I'm redoing the backyard. So I started a waterfall like six years ago and I never finished it. And I have all these big stones that are about eight inches thick and they're probably four foot by four foot and I think they're anywhere from 300 to 500 pounds and I had 12 stones and uh, I loaded them by myself it was blistering hot and I thought you know what I'm up for the task because I'm not feeling that good and I just figured I would sweat it out of my system well that didn't happen but anyway (laughs) it was wrecked the whole day but I only was able to do 11 of the 12 stones because I ran out of trailer room. So I, uh, I came home and I unloaded the other stone and uh, took the trailer back to my friend's house. And, and this is for your pond for, waterfall? Yeah, mm-hmm. so I have, a, I have something that's bigger than a pond but smaller than a lake. So, right. you know, but uh, it's a nice size. So I have a very, very nice in the backyard, and I haven't been able to maintain it the last couple of years due to my father passing, my mother passing, and all that. Re, re, completely refurbishing my parents' house, and and we finally sold that, which was nice. And uh, so the muskrat head took it over like section eight. But little anyway, bastards. yeah, little fuckers. But anyway, sorry, kids. Um, so anyway, I'm I've drained it down to almost nothing, and. Uh, I'm just letting the banks dry and uh, rebuilding the banks and uh, I have to put all the square stand, sandstone back into the into the two-thirds of the pond where they eroded underneath it and all the stone fell in the water so that's my project and I always take on yeah. big stuff and I don't <clears throat> mind doing that I'm, I can't wait to get it back to the way it used to be because it was very very beautiful but anyway, that's uh, great. That was that my was, week. That was exciting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, it's great having Albert on the show last week. Yeah, Albert on I'm trying to, week. I need to find out where he gets those suits. So, <laughs> <laughs> try to get me one in. He always has head. some cool get up clothing. It's try to get cool. one in my Dunbar plaid. That would be That's cool. it. <laughs> you have like a family plaid coat. Oh, yeah. Huh? I have yeah. a tartan. Yeah. Huh? Nice. Yeah, well, we do the travel log in it couple weeks uh, you'll see my castle as well cool <clears throat> so nice. taste him. Deb trains on oh hey Deb Is she on? good to have you thanks for tuning in oh I don't see any comments she's not chatting but oh. she's on oh, yeah, right. don't be scared Jen yeah. Hawks is on a work call but she'll be on in a moment okay alrighty well, it's good to have Jen on well Jen so yeah, what uh, what did you say? We're you said we're tasting. Are you ready to get into the tasting? Do we have more we have more to cover? More ground to cover? Oh please, no! I <laughs> no no no. We're well, we're ready to have you tell us about tonight's. Are you ready to have me tell you yeah. about it? I actually found a lot of very interesting history on uh, how you say Lafroy. Mm-hmm. Okay, you do pronounce the G. Yeah. And, um, I wasn't so. sure. You know, these Scottish things, I, I always kind of screw these things up. Why well, you got to be messing with my stuff over here? Anyway, just kidding you. Yeah. So I elbowed it into your laptop. Oh, it's all cool. So Lefroy 18 uh, was founded in 1815 by Donald and Alexander Johnston. And Lefroy, it's called after its location, and it means broad hollow by the bay. And it would remain in that family for the next 139 years. Wow. Wow. 
And one year was that? 1815. 19, 1895. 1815. 1815. 1815. And what was his name? Donald and Alexander Johnston. Wow, that sounds more like the name of a like bourbon guy. That somebody from Isla Lafroy, you expect him to be like, you know, Angus McDougall or something. <laughs> <laughs> Not oh, Johnston. Uh, anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Every see now you said Angus and you said Johnston. My head went straight to ACDC because that's how I go. Oh, okay. Right. Anyway, Don and, Donald and Alexander Johnston they leased a thousand acres of land in Isla for rearing cattle. Uh, but to raise cattle, you have to have grow, whiskey. feed barley. Oh. Well, feed <laughs> barley, you know? Right. Yeah. And uh, there's only one thing to do with surplus barley. That's right. right. Distill right. whiskey. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So the word had spread around Isla that the whiskey being produced at Lafroig was particularly good because their source of water was very soft and peaty. Which we will go into a little bit more on the uh, whiskey, whiskey wizard. wizard today. Yes, that's our topic. Um, 1836, Donald offered offered his brother Alexander 350 pounds uh, for his share of Lafroig, and Alexander agreed. And he later emigrated to Australia. But unfortunately, just 11 short years later, Donald passed away and it's said that he died after falling into a vat of partially made whiskey mm. right that sounds that's like suicide to me well it sounds like that joke i told a couple weeks ago. <laughs> remember they said was it was a was it a quick death and he said not exactly he got up three times to go to the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> oh man! Here we're laughing at poor Donald, poor okay. guy, no, just that's, out there doing his job. That's and he not falls funny. That's a, that's an industrial yeah. accident. It's we dead. take that stuff serious. Hey, wait it's, a minute! That really sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Okay, so after that, what happened? <laughs> okay, so we get back. <laughs> I forgot what camera we were on. I had to double check. Everybody started committing suicide then. No, no stop go. it. Fell into half. Finished battle with. 1857, Dugald Johnston took over running the distillery, and he was assisted by his co his cousin Alexander Johnston, and they ran the distillery until 1877. So they ran that for 20 years. Um, Alexander Johnston, when he died, the distillery was then inherited by his sisters. So we're still staying in the, in the family. family. Um, Mrs. William Hunter and Catherine Johnston, and also the nephew, Jay Johnston Hunter, came into the picture then. Um, what I found pretty interesting about Lafroig is what started happening in the 19th century. M much of the Isla malt went into blends, and Lafroig was no different. So its smoky and peaty taste was really appreciated by the whiskey blenders. And it was coveted by Lafroig's next door neighbors at Lagavulin. Ah. Uh -huh. So Lagavulin at the time was owned by Mackey and Company. And Mackey and Company was taking the lion's share of Lafroig for blending their grain whiskey. Ah. Uh -huh. And this was starting to trouble Dugald Johnston. Um because it restricted his ability to sell Lafroig in its own single malt. Right. So we got a kind of got a little uh, what do you call the uh, Hatfields and the McCoys yep, yep. going on over there. So Lafroig was starting to gain more of a reputation as being a leader in single malt. So this problem was starting to really come to a head. Um, in 1907, Peter Mackey, which is the La Lagavulin, he had the distillery's Kilbride stream blocked with stones because he wanted to divert uh, the water right to him. from Lafroy over to Lavagulin. <laughs> Bastards. Yes. Um, but fortunately, the, court, the courts intervened and um, Mackey was required to do the right thing, put everything back and restore the water supply back to Lafroy. And then in 
there was some fighting going on for a while. Um, and in 1908, Peter Mackey decided if he can't beat him, he would join him. So he took Lefroig's head brewer and persuaded him to come over to Lagavulin. He built an exact copy of the Lefroig still house, and he was hoping to create another Lefroig. Mm -hmm. um, How'd that work out for him? Well, you might have thought when he had Lefroig's head brewer, the exact copy of the stills, um, and the same bay right next door with the water source that it would be easy to copy mm -hmm. the taste of Lefroig. But as the whiskey wizard always says, such is the delicate alchemy <laughs> of <Right>. Lefroig. <laughs> so um, they couldn't duplicate it. Yeah, it's all those unique variables in any distillery and every process. So even when you try, and here they are very close together in the same basically small area of Scotland and still um, you can't change this there's always that unique character you get yeah you know the it's all those variables of the shape of the, the aging facilities the shape of the buildings the, all that has an influence on, on how things turn out so yeah so even with the head brewer couldn't do it so, because Peter Mackey couldn't duplicate Lefroig, he kept trying to buy Lefroig's distillery and the land, um, and many, many court battles were ongoing. Um, it, it put a strain on the company. Um, so, at, at that time, back it, going into 1921, Ian Hunter, not the Ian Hunter you know of, like in the music Not world today. Not <laughs> But Ian Hunter, who was the son of William Hunter, he took over running the stiller, the distillery, and to to get it, you know, more money and um, kind of build it up again. He took the distillery worldwide. Nice, smart. Yes. So. And I thank him for that. Yes, Amen. I'm sure you do. So among the first to fall for the. Uh, Thick peat smoke were the Scandinavians, and that's unsurprising to some because they were some of Isla's earliest settlers. Then yeah. it went into Latin America, Europe, Canada, um, and even Prohibition America uh, was targeted. And it said that Ian was persuading a U.S. Customs agent with the whiskey's pungent smell and got them to imbibe in a, a little wee dram or two. And the customs officers agreed, okay, come on in after come drinking on, a few Come on in, all right. So um, 1932, uh, there was a lady, Bessie Williamson. She had just gotten her master's degree at Glasgow University, and she was looking for her job. She reached out to her uncle, who just happened to be the accountant at Lefroig, and he was the accountant to Ian Hunter. So she was offered a summer job to come work in the office for them. And she ended up eventually taking the reins as the first female owner of the distillery. Yeah. Um, Ian trusted her so much that he turned over all his secrets of the Lefroig to her. And she ended up working there for 40 years. Nice. Wow. That's great. So that is the history, pretty much, of Lefroig. What we are drinking tonight is the 18-year Lefroig 18. It was discontinued in the U.S. in 2016. Yeah, not the easiest thing to get. And as I've said before, particularly with these Ilo whiskeys, uh, 18, uh, that kind of age is usually the sweet spot that's when they're at their peak and um, I you know I have a feeling that's gonna be uh, the same with this one and um, you know that that peak to that peatiness and that smoky punch um, which is very you know pr prominent in these Isla whiskeys that tends to fade and mellow in a nice way um, it's still there but uh, it tends to mellow in these when you start getting in this kind of age range. So, um, and it lets more of the other kinds of 
uh, aromas and tastes that are in there come out. So uh, they just get fantastic right around this age. And um, the Freud, even the 10, I think is outstanding. So I'm excited to dive into this one. I like it. Okay. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. It's uh, ABV 48%. Correct, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, it, uh, mm -hmm. The MSRP on this is about $150. And uh, gee, we were talking before the show. Yeah, what, was, what's what? the current price if you try to just go buy well, it? Well, so if you can find it, you could only find it secondary. And I've seen it as much as anywhere from 500 to to $1,000 a bottle. So uh, when, when uh, we learned that they were pulling this from the shelf, uh, I bought two bottles and, um, and Joe bought one and, uh, and so, I kept... So after this tasting, I owe you about 60 bucks. You owe me about 60 bucks. No, we'll like yeah. I mean, that's kind of on the low scale, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but anyway. Well, so I anyway, got we, you know, we finally, uh, we finally uh, cracked it open and, uh, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to try it. Okay, well, I'm going to cleanse the palate. I'm going to cleanse the palate, too. Yeah, I'm drinking my Long Branch. I, I have had the Lafora 18 before, and... Oh, yeah. I think <laughs> I think that we've been, you know, I think throughout uh, last year and then this year, Single Malt, mis single malt Whiskey Month, I, I think you're starting to come around and get we'll a little see. more appreciation we'll than you've we had in the past. See. That's what I was wondering, you know, just, you know... Closing out Scotch whiskey yeah. month, maybe I'm, you know, changing my palate a little yeah, bit. Yeah, can be. I'm drinking yeah, more Scotch now than I have since last week, so uh, since still last learning. <laughs> well, you set the bar pretty high last week. Well, so. I did set the bar pretty high. Mm. Okay, so anyway, golden that it's mm. that great um, golden pear kind of color. A little darker than a standard Irish whiskey. Yeah. Much. Definitely darker. Now, is that the peat? Um, you get some, depending on how it's done, but um, just usually time in the barrel. It's going to give it some more color. So let's see the nose here. Definitely smoky, peaty, earthy. I get Ooh. the uh, BF Goodrich tire out of it. And, uh, Brine, uh, there's definitely baby the... Baby diaper, um, get baby diaper. There's Definitely the uh, kind of um, that was a little bit of that brine, but I also got some sweet, sweeter like caramel and some citrus. But there's definitely the the uh, the peat and the you know you, it the the peat and, and even the smoke is so uh, pleasingly the aroma is very yeah. very nice in it. And you're right, you do get you do I, I I get a little I get a little of the barrel out of it as well. There's um, definitely some some oak. Right, you in know, there. I, I get. Uh, so when we were saying this, this ages. I think it's full eighteen years. In, full eighteen year in uh, ex bourbon cast. Oh. So it, it, there's no finishing going on. Right, it's which I kind of like. It keeps the, the purity, the Isla purity going. So you know, a year ago, probably or longer, I wouldn't even touch that. Wouldn't even touch it. But uh, you know, I've been. You've been turning me on to all these different good scotches uh, in the last uh, almost year, and uh, starting one to reviewer I read called that it had the, some nose that included Novocaine. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yes. But there is. I, I may be seeing a little bit what they mean. Oh my gosh! Yes. So when I first tried this, it was very medicinal, and it. I, it, there's no other way to say it. It tasted like Band-Aids to me. <laughs> tasted and smelled like Band-Aids. Now, there was, you're talking about the 18, not the 10. I'm talking about the 18 okay. when I first, and, and it was very harsh. I'll tell you, I don't know if it's, like you said, because I'm getting used to it, my palate's changing, but I don't, I'll say it, the medicinal is there, and when you said Novocaine, yes. Yeah, I, don't, I don't get the broken arm cast smell. No, I don't. <laughs> but... But I don't get the band-aids anymore. It's no. not that overpowering yeah. medicinal. Yeah, I, but sometimes you do get that definite kind of, and that, and again, that makes sense because what causes what the peat imparts on the malt is is phenols. That's the compound that we taste as peatiness, and there, you know, 
that's that's actually what's used to make band-aids is you know phenol mm -hmm. plastic what do you want? The, the, anyway. the cardboard bottle i'm sorry but as whiskey appreciators know that becomes a beautiful thing when it uh when that malt goes into the barrel for a long period so I'm ready to dive in. And, uh, I am too. Do you want me to read nice. the nose it's to see if you guys were close with the... Yeah, what's the nose? What does your official nose say? My notes, and I want to call it because Doug pulled out some exact things here. So, nose, smoky, 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 malty dough, lemon citrus, lots of minerals, and oyster-like brine. Ah. Yeah, I said there was definitely the, mm -hmm. the brine. The brine. And there. then the sweeter, heavier notes come through a little later with dried fruit and pie crust. Okay. All right. So that's what I got on that. There is a, yeah, I can see the dough. Kind of, there's a little bit of a sweet doughy uh, right, nose in the middle. A, I'm going to give it a little taste. Yeah, over. let's go. Okay, here's the real test, kids. Oh, now that's a whiskey. That's nice. I get on the aftertaste. I get a I get a nice, nice mouthful of smoke, and I actually uh, I actually get lemon juice. Yeah, I get even a little more of the citrus on the uh, on the palate. I'm it's, gonna uh, go in for some more. The aftertaste is long, and it's uh, it's a light smoke, and it, it lingers. It's very nice, very very nice. I like it. We got some people talking. Uh, we got uh, Steve Williams, Jennifer Boggs, G Money, Jeff Polis <laughs> out there. Uh, Jennifer's drinking some. What did you say, Jennifer? Knob Creek. Is that what I'm sipping on some Knob Creek Twelve. Okay, nice. Um, and. G Money has an LFD double legero. Double ahedero. Double ahedero. Uh, so, yeah, Greg, uh, Greg, we were at the cigar event with. I took him, uh, he just started smoking cigars, and I uh, took him to the cigar event, and we had a great time. Well, we had we had fun here at the house first, a little pregame, and uh, good kid. He's uh, known him for a long time. We, I, I gave him a cigar, it all started there, so um, became good friends. Good guy. I, um, I appreciate you watching, Greg, and uh, hopefully we see you soon. Yeah. See you soon. <laughs> Matt Souza says, look at Doug's guns. <laughs> <laughs> Doug's guns. Show him your guns. <laughs> <laughs> um, I get... Um, oh, sorry. We I are get doing some, a whiskey show. I get some grapefruit <laughs> um, kind of on the in the middle palate. Um, then I get some kind of... Um, Maybe that. It's maybe on the that's, finish. I, I get said, almost a gram. I said lemon juice. Maybe it would. It yeah, could have been more like a grapefruit type of type of flavor. But it was. Uh, it was one of the last things. Guys, I just I can't do it. Yeah, I still. I get. I get. I think it's more. I think I get more of the lemon citrusy out of it. You don't like it. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not a Scotch well, person. Well, okay. But we're trying so. No, but hey, I tried to see if my yeah, palate could change could, a little uh, bit. You could pass your COVID over to Doug if you want to. No, that's I mean. I mean, you're Scotch if you want. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I like it. I think it's good. I enjoy it. So, I mean, it's possible you'll never be uh, an Isla type of whiskey drinker. Although, you really, I think you, you did like the, the uh, Colt Isla. Colt Isla was good. We tried. Yeah, I was surprised about that. And it was... And it was fairly. Next time I order, I'm going to order yeah. a bottle of that. The yeah, it's one of my. The, as we've talked about, 18 is my favorite. And I have a bottle for a very special occasion. So I'm, well, let's just get another bottle. Yeah. You know, I just yes. I'm I'm having a hard time pulling out anything other than the smoky peat. It's to me, it's overpowering. Like I I, I know there's something else there, but I can't grab it because the peat is just so strong. But our son loves that. Yeah, I like the lighter the lighter uh, yeah. scotches, if you will. But Cameron this is, and Lauren, I, I don't know this. if you're there, but uh, I, would drink this. I know you would appreciate this. Mm. 
So the, the palette notes that I have says it's wonderfully rich buttery flavor is predominant from start to finish. Get butter? I didn't get any butter. Get any butter? Well, you know what? Maybe. Well, that's when I was talking about so, the so, dough, the doughies. Yeah, so, so may, maybe a, maybe I just didn't recognize it, but it is it is very smooth and creamy. Yeah, it has. It really is. So maybe maybe that is what they consider the butter, but I don't get any butter flavor, so I, to yeah, say. Yeah, no but butter I definitely flavor. Get the, no. It's, the I would, it's, very, it's very comfortable in the mouth, it really yeah. is. Got a good mouth feel and um, got a great character all the way around. I, mean, uh, I mean, just take everything if you like Isla whiskey, and then you know, it, it just amplify it to. Uh, I mean, smooth it out, but right, sure. But take all that's good and, and amplify it. So it's just superb. But uh, do you get any, anyway? Do you get any melted caramel? I get that I get, on the nose. But I, didn't get I get a little bit of, like I said, car like get some of that on the nose. But mm. the, the finish is fantastic. It really is. It really is. Nice long finish. It is. It's long, exactly. It's very nice. Yeah, don't don't try this as your first scotch. Don't try no, this at home, kids. You've never tried Scottish whiskey, single malt whiskey. This probably wouldn't be the best one to start with. Because then you're going to think they all taste like this, and, and they don't. Now you want to pick a good lowland or a space side to start out. So, anyway, <clears throat> we'd be happy to give any recommendations. All right. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if we... <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for asking. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. So. All right, it's time for the scores. Big G, what do you score this one? I am going to do a, for what it is... Um, the fact of the distilling process in the only 18 year, so to say, uh, in, in one barrel, so to say, I am, uh, I'm going to give it a 4.3. A 4.3? And that's a lot for me to say about scotch. That is a huge I'm going to give it a 4.3. Statement. I, 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 for what it is, I, I am not a drinker of the heavier scotches, so to say, but that was uh, very pleasing to me. Yeah. And that's probably maybe the second time I've ever had it, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm I, even though will, will I drink it? Um, you know, with friends I probably would, but uh, would it be my go-to? No. But what I did, I right. know I'm being. If you knew you had somebody that appreciates right. single malt, right? You might break it right. out. Right, and, sure. and, and that's a and that's a great great product to bring out. And for oh, yeah. I'm pleasantly I'm, surprised, and, and it, it kind of grabbed me. And I'm just uh, that's my score, man. That's my score. Interesting. All right, Karen. Well, we're going to have to put an asterisk around this one. Yeah, you really do need to put an asterisk around this one because it's just the, the peatiness is not my thing. But it's right. a light peat. Uh, says you. Um, okay. <laughs> so it's, it's bad because, you know, on our rating scale, one is like it's trash it's garbage i wouldn't call it trash or garbage it's not trash or garbage it's just not my palate so sure. i'm having a very hard time trying to find the right rating for this um so i i, I think i'm just gonna go straight three on three this off. one because um all right yeah, well, that's right so you're just right in the middle no, i'm just gonna stay right in the middle with that's it. fine okay so I think this is an exceptional whiskey. I'm an Isla lover, as you guys all know. So um, this is pretty high up there. I, it might even it, it might rank uh, rank high on my my list. So I, I'm going to give uh, probably my highest score so far. I'm going to I'm calling this a 4.65. There you go. All right. Wow. Nice. So. Nice, nice, nice. And eventually we're going to get these all listed, all our scores. We keep saying that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a project. That. I, need days. Some, I need a little help with it. but anyway. One of these days we'll get it there. We'll get it So, together. So Pete figures prominently in this whiskey and all, you know, Isla's as we talked about. And it's the thing to me that is, you know, makes Scotch whiskey Scotch whiskey. Although there's, you know, I have to say there's a lot of great single malts out there that have very little peat. Um, and then do other things with cask finishing that make them really unique and fantastic. So that said, though, uh, since we are featuring, it's an appropriate whiskey for uh, the whiskey wizard we have tonight. 
uh, which is on the topic of peat and mm -hmm. peating and whiskey. So uh, we'll go to the Whiskey Wizard if we're ready. And we are ready. ready. We'll see you all back here in a few minutes. All right, kids. All Talk right. to you in a minute. Hang tight. Whiskey Wizard! It's the Whiskey Wizard! Hello and welcome to the Whiskey Wizard, where we say that whiskey making takes scientific knowledge, an artisan's skill and dedication, and a bit of the wizard's alchemy of light, air, earth, and fire. Last time we discussed the barley malting process, and this time I want to continue with our focus on Scottish whiskey by taking a look at the use of peat and its influence on the taste and character of Scottish whiskey. Throughout most of history, Peat was the most readily accessible fuel throughout Scotland. The persistence of boggy areas provides for a retarded rate of decomposition of plant materials such as moss, grass, and tree roots, which ultimately leads to the creation of peat. As a note, peat that nature takes and further compresses and heats over long time periods eventually becomes coal. Peat accumulates slowly so peat bogs are typically thousands of years old. Of course, in Scotland, peat has historically fueled not only home and hearth, but was the easy choice for use in the country's distillery kilns as well. As we said last time, Scotland's distilleries mostly rely today on commercially malted barley, while in the past they had to malt their own barley. Likewise, as other fuels are more widely available today, so it is that many commercial distillers have adjusted the level of their use of peat, or even have decided to use wood, coal, or coke exclusively. When peat is burned as fuel to provide heat for kilning the malted barley, it also produces an especially aromatic smoke that has a large influence on the flavor and character of the malt. Peat infuses it with compounds known as phenols during the drying process. Thankfully, this remains still to this day, where we have these traditional and unique styles of whiskey with lots of variation in flavor. By volume, there are about 5.2 trillion cubic yards of peat in the world covering a total of around 2% of the global land area. Peat is also a very important carbon sink for the planet. You can see in this map where the largest peat reserves are and their distribution in Scotland. You can see how it's most abundant in the West Highlands, the West Islands, the Northwest, and the Northern Islands. Of course, it is these regions that tend to produce the more peated styles of Scottish single malt. This map shows the thickness of the peat deposits. The darker the red, the deeper the peat is, sometimes as much as 20 meters deep. Look at the Northern Hebrides and some of these areas in the West. Peat is harvested from peat bogs using both traditional and automated methods. Using a special rake, the peat is sliced off from the bank cut out of the peat formation. Slices of peat are cut out and laid across the moor to dry out. There's a special tool, a kind of peat iron or tear skier, the Gaelic term for the tool, which facilitates the peat coming away in slabs, usually a foot or so in length and a few inches thick. Once it is cut, it is laid out to dry. Once dry, it's ready to be used as fuel for drying the malted barley. Look, it appears to me that these quality-related uh, peated whiskeys tend to divide whiskey consumers. Maybe this has always been somewhat true. It's my experience that most whiskey drinkers eventually do make their foray into peated whiskeys. So it is too that novice drinkers are encouraged to explore the lighter, unpeated expressions first. I guess that peat is more than just a quirky trait which tempts whiskey drinkers to validate their status as aficionados. It's more than a simple addition of smoky aromatics, which, while strong in my opinion, do not overwhelm all the many other flavors in the whiskey. Peat is still 
to a good many, a defining aspect of Scotch whiskey. And we should approach it with a, with a bit of reverence. The peat level in whiskeys is measured by evaluating the level of phenol in parts per million in the malt itself as opposed to the concentration in the finished whiskey. The island of Isla has particularly rich, high quality peat that is also high in bromine, which helps to further add the oceanic and subtle seaweed flavors to malt dried in Isla's distilling and kilning processes. Isla whiskeys tend to be the some of the most highly peated offerings available in today's marketplace. They are also some of the world's most famous and successful distilleries. Lighter whiskeys measure up to 20 parts per million. More robustly peated offerings can range from 160 to over 300 parts per million. Still, we should keep in mind that whiskeys of similar parts per million can still taste very different and the use of peat has started to influence some whiskeys made outside of Scotland as well. So, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Sure, we will feature a Scotch whiskey roughly once a month on the show, and we're always open to any requests as far as what we feature and taste. As much as I love and appreciate American whiskeys, I always look forward to that next quality dram from my ancestral homeland. And when it comes to heavily peated whiskeys, all I can say is, yes, please. That's it for this edition. This is Doug Dunbar, the Whiskey Wizard for the Whiskey Round Table, and Slanjava, and now back to the live show. <laughs> I love how Doug does it for my benefit. So a lot of people say they love how Doug ends the Whiskey Wizard. He totally does that for my benefit. So it's like, hey. Quite hey, exaggerated. Hey, dipshit, we're coming back. Yeah. Pay attention. I got to keep coming up with new ways to do it. But, uh, yeah. But anyways. So, so yeah, um, you know, one of the things that I um, meant to mention in actually in that episode, and I didn't, was... You know, there's. I've heard a question. We've had some questions, and then I, you know, I've heard people say things like, "Well, you know, is Scotland running out of peat?" Well, um, in truth, no. Now, Campbelltown used to have uh, Campbelltown. What? What? Campbelltown. Campbelltown I... used to have about 23 distilleries. Is now, Moose Knuckles Company. <laughs> yeah. You know Chuck exactly. It. I'm sorry, Doug. Yeah, and they so crying. now they only have three. But one of the reasons is they did start to run out of uh, peat. Usually, you see two. And uh, they import it now from Isla. So, but Scotland as a whole, as you saw in this episode, the, there's plenty of reserves. In fact, the Scottish climate creates more peat every year than the whole of the Scottish whiskey industry uses up. So. So no worries, Pete. Uh, we're not going to run out of Pete. So what about the moose knuckle? <laughs> what happened to him? Yeah, what happened to the moose knuckle? Who, what are you talking about? The camel, <laughs> the camel toe. <laughs> Did I miss something? I don't Sorry, know. Kids. Camel town. Oh, oh, oh. camel this town. Town, oh. town, town. Yeah. I so, can't get it right so sometimes. So Cameron is on. Uh, he gave a big heart. He loves the Lagavulin. And uh, Jennifer Bogg said, excellent Whiskey Wizard segment. Oh, thank you. Thank Kiss you. ass. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she wants to come back on. She wants yeah, to come back yeah. on. She needs to come back. She she'll, comes, she'll let us know. When, I'll sell you some booze. I found some free booze. I'll sell it. Yeah. <laughs> it's in a nice big bag mm -hmm. over there. Yeah. So They were fun. They were definitely fun. So, yeah. So, I guess, man, we're to the news. Um, um, I just we'll have be, to comment, yeah, though. The yeah. t-shirt you wore in your Whiskey Wizard segment... You, was. Kayla's Skate Party, I noticed. Yes, what, yeah. it's one of my favorite t-shirts. Um, it's just comfortable, and it's actually from my daughter's 13th birthday party when everybody got those t-shirts that was Boy participating in a... We went to the roller rink. and uh, no, it was the first boy-girl party, yeah. Oh. So, of course, we had to chaperone. <laughs> At 13? Yeah. <laughs> But I love that shirt. I, oh break, I break it out every oh once in a while. Yeah. 
right. Well, before we go to the news, I, hey, uh, G Money, I got you some fresh hand rolled Cuban cigars from the event, so uh, I'll hook up with you this week and uh, get that over to you. All right. I just got you a couple. I only got six, so I'm going to give you a few. Okay. All right. Up, <laughs> up in you. Go ahead. Jennifer says she definitely wants to come back on, and she said, "Pass me your chapstick." Because she, <laughs> she's. She's kissing. And Polis, if you're if you're still watching, nice comment. <laughs> Jackass. <laughs> now I'm not even repeating yeah, that one. He's stupid. Go he's ahead. stupid. <laughs> All right. Sorry. So. All right. We go got ahead. News. We got news. You going first, Doug? You want me to go first? You yeah, go ahead. All right. Hang on a second. I gotta find it because All right. I'm not paying attention. Why don't you go ahead? Do you want me to go to first? No, I got it. Right. Oh, okay. All right. Blanton straight from the barrel is coming to the shelves in the U.S. of A. What is that? Blanton's. Blanton's. The, the Blanton's barrel, the gold. Oh, oh yeah, it's yeah. Coming. It's coming. Yeah, I thought we covered that. We no? did cover that. I'm just kind okay. of reiterating. No, that's good. That's fine. Yeah, uh, that's I just okay. want. I just. It's a uh, Blanton's uh, line shares the same Buffalo Trace Mashville Number no. Two recipe across the board. Uh, it's going to be 90, 93 proof. Just a, again, reiterating, the gold is slightly higher. Uh, which we're talking about the gold. I apologize. They're they're redoing all their stuff. So anyway, uh, Blanton's gold is going to be at 103 proof. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Kind the, of the, range. Uh, the barrel is uh, barrel strength, uncut, unfiltered, high rye goodness, uh, proof to vary uh, from barrel to barrel. Uh, it generally above 120 proof. How about that? Being in the standard bottle like they always have. And expect to pay around a hundred and fifty dollars a bottle, so um, well, you know secondary it's going to be five six hundred bucks. So yeah, just yeah. FYI. Uh, yeah, so. it's like saying the suggested retail price on this Lafroy eighteen is one hundred and fifty dollars. Right. right. But so. you can't purchase it for under five hundred. So are they going to have the same? You said it's in the same bottle. They're going to have the same horses. And same stuff? horses, same everything. Just uh, so the ho I, it won't be like a unique race that you have to try to get. Out no, of the gold no, bottle. it's just it's just a whole. It's the same bottle, same horses. Uh, instead of the black wax, you're going to have the gold wax. Um, you're going to have a gold label instead of the the. Uh, um, it's going to be shiny gold label and not the standard. I call it the money paper. Is what I call it. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different. So anyway, so that's uh, that. If I remember correctly, that's supposed to hit in September. That's right around yeah. the corner. Right around yeah. the corner. So just in time uh, for our transition back to American West. I might have to uh, trade some of my some half, of your current half a case of Blattens that I have and uh, maybe get some stuff. Anyway, go ahead, Dougie. What do you got? Well. Um, for August releases, um, we have the new Smokehead Rum Rebel Isla Whiskey, um, available through the Whiskey Barrel, and this is covered in the Scotch Whiskey News. Um, it, the The actual distillery is a mystery, but uh, you can uh, purchase this. I definitely want to get me some. Um, rum finished Isla Whiskey sounds intriguing to mm -hmm. me. Um, a jolt of immense smoke and fiery peat, followed by soothing citrus, tropical fruits, and uh, the brought about by the, of course, the Caribbean rum casks. So it's marshmallow and bacon in there, mm. full of flavor. So, um, and it's got this, uh, well, we'll put it on our show notes or on our Facebook page, and, and a link uh, where, it, where you can obtain it. So, you um, had me at bacon. Yeah. And me a bacon and marshmallow, two of my favorite flavors. <laughs> so one of the writers, Will Price, that I do when I see some of his stuff on whiskey reviews, um, I tend to find that I agree with him to some extent uh, fairly consistently. So anyway, he came up with the 12 best new bourbons and whiskey releases of 2020. So um, I'll just t kind of cover these. Um, do you th have anything you would guess? Because we've covered some of these in the in the over the course of the year, of course, but uh. so I mean, a couple of my couple of the standards that are well sellers uh, out right now. Um, you know, I would if I had to name a few, I'd say a, a, you know maybe a Dickel product, probably a Weller product, 
um, any of Buffalo Trace's products. Um, Got to have a wild turkey. In you know, there. maybe uh, Old Elk or you know some of the newer stuff that come out the the uh, you know Boone County and just different things like that. Um, I know Four Roses is is making a huge statement lately, um, and their stuff is priced deep, deep, nice. You know, and uh, Maker's Mark. I mean, Maker's Mark is a huge seller right now. Old Riff. Um, you know, those are just some things that come to mind. Mm -hmm. Well, his 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 are, of course, and you did mention this, a Weller single barrel. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that. Is it single barrel? The Weller single barrel is that on the shelves yet? I don't even know if it's on the shelves yet. Um, I well, we covered it. I thought it was an earlier release. Okay. This year. I know foolproof is out, but okay. they also they also yeah. showed Weller also showed a new product of regular single barrel, weeded single barrel. Yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I don't know. I'm just saying, you know. Ninety-seven proof. Uh, I'm sure it's a it's a well or it's weeded, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and you said Buffalo Trace, so that's one of theirs. Okay. Um, Knob Creek nine year uh, bourbon, and uh, although he says the twelve year is excellent, but he right. picks the nine year is one of the best. Uh, Elijah Craig Elijah Toasted Craig. Barrel. Toasted bourbon. Barrel. I forgot about Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. Dying yeah. to try that. I have uh, I have Full Proof and I have, uh, shoot, there's another Elijah Craig that I have that I haven't uh, opened yet. I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. Uh, Sweeten's Cove Tennessee Bourbon. So, okay. Hmm. And that was one that neither of us had heard about. Um, so there you go. Well, that's why it's good to cover these things. And then also another one, Wolves Wally Blend. Hmm. Never heard of it. Never heard of that uh, let's see. Launched by Sneakerheads, but Wolves Whiskey Blending and Sourcing Partnership with Charvet Distillery has proven fruitful. The Wally Blend, a mix of eight year old whiskey distilled from stout beer and aged in French oak. Five, five year old whiskey distilled from Pilsner beer and aged in new charred American oak. Nine-year-old single malt whiskey aged in second-use French oak and MGP rye. Hmm. Wow. He ranked that as one of the best of the year. So that's interesting. So now when they say they took stout beer and Pilsner beer and then distilled it, I'm, I mean, to me, I'm wondering, did it actually have, was it actually beer, meaning it had hops in it? Mm-hmm. And then you did the distillation process because usually you make all, all distillation. You start out with a mash. This right. is essentially like a beer. Sure. But of course, beer is all malt, so you're essentially just taking a. Is it an all malt mash or is it actually beer that they use? Right. So interesting. Of course, stout you have you have your chocolate malt in there. You have your roasted malt. That's where that dark color comes from. So, but they don't usually have many. Um, fermentable compounds in in those, but hmm. uh, okay. The other one was Sagamore. Sagamore, okay. Uh, Spirit Which? Calvados Finish Rye. I think we did talk about that, um, so he that's on his list. And of course, the Wilderness tr Wilderness Trail, Trail. Bourbon, sure. which we have talked about and have any uh, Bardstown. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think. That, well, no, I think there's one that we're talking about in the news. It was on his okay. list. Okay. And then he had the um, Bullet Blender Select 001 Straight Bourbon. And then Woodford Reserve Batch Proof 2020. Mm -hmm. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Batch A120. That's the other barrel so proof. So that's I two have. Elijah have barrel, Craig's. Full proof and barrel proof. You have that. You mentioned the Blanton's Gold. Blanton's that's gold. on his yeah. list. So, all right. No wild there. turkey. No wild, no wild boo, turkey products. Yes, boo. Bastards. Also, uh, <laughs> India's first ever foray into, into single malts is finally out. Amrup Tripavara. So, um, so you can uh, you can find that if you uh, I think if you look online. So, if you're interested in trying um, some Indian single malt. It's got Supposedly, lots of fruit and um, light uh, tropical fruit, citrus flavors, like a 
pe creamy peach and melon cocktail, it says. So I imagine you'll get lots of esters if you're mashing in a place that averages about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So. A couple of things. Jennifer Bog said the Wilderness Trail was delicious. Yeah, Wilderness I've got a couple too. of those. So I, I have a couple uh, Wilderness Trails and their store blends that uh, Scott mm. Rory Blatt brought up, uh, you know, brought up for uh, in Kentucky. In Kentucky for me. So uh, so that's a kind of a rising star. A little bit. Yeah, that's um, and that's you can get story. Wilderness Trail um, up here in the liquor stores. You know, yeah. Ohio oh, has yeah. released a lot of finally has released a lot of in the last year um, stuff that you couldn't find. So. And Scotch Whiskey News just says that the uh, the drink of the summer in all of Scotland and, um, and the British Isles is a highball. It's just basic, well, it's just frozen. It looks like you, you freeze some um, Great King uh, blended uh, single malt whiskey or blended whiskey, Scottish whiskey artist blend. I've never heard of it. But apparently, at the famous bar in Tokyo, um, Rockfish in Tokyo started doing this, and it was one of their most popular uh, requested drinks of the year. So, <laughs> so I imagine um, you know another good uh, whiskey that to freeze in the put in the freezer and drink cold is Johnny Walker Green Label. I haven't had the Johnny Walker green. I've, I've heard that's, and that's how they even recommend. That's one of the ways they recommend enjoying it. So in the summer, it's maybe sure. a thing to consider. And you mentioned Bardstown. So Bardstown Bourbon Company unveils its latest collaborative series expression. Um, it's uh, it's a Oloroso Sherry, 12-year-old Indiana bourbon finished in Copper and King Spanish Oloroso Sherry Barrels for 18 months. All right. And uh, that is just out in August. So that's all I got. I was going to do the Bardstown, you just did it for me. Okay. Done. All right. All right. Jennifer says that uh, there will be six bottles of the Blanton's Gold allocated for all Ohio. She probably yeah, well, I didn't, I, didn't go there. I didn't go there. It's a lottery system, kids. Oh, my God. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't give you the rest uh, of the news. But it's, it's, Ohio's only doing it on a lottery system. Greg, you have some Blanton's Gold. I have a bottle or two. Yeah. Or 12. We'll drive to New York. <laughs> I, think I, I think I'm up to... Uh, Don't. No one needs yeah, to you know, know that. No, Six bottles. He's got, he, yeah, he's got at least a half a dozen, I'll bet. So, um, any other comments? Or are we, are we wrapping mm -hmm. up? Um, G Money's still see. watching? G Money's uh, still Matt watching? Matt Souza sipping on JW Green now. Oh, Matt's had, did you have it cold, Matt? Um, let us know if you took it out of the freezer or if you're just you're having it neat. Courtesy of DD, is that you? Oh, it was a little birthday. Ah, okay. Ah, gotcha. and, uh, Johnny Love Walker Matt. Green. Love Johnny, you. Johnny Walker uh, Green's the only all um, malt whiskey that they have. I like uh, his pictures on Facebook with the grandson. He is. Oh, cute. Yeah. He, he is. That little kid is so friggin' cute. He is. He he is. is. Oh my well, god. Well, he's even cuter in person. We got I, every time I watch his videos, I find myself smiling. You yeah. know, I mean, you, you go to watch something and you have your emotions or whatever. I just, Next thing you know, I'm smiling at this little kid. I don't even know. You know, I was like, that 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 kid is cool. He's you know, cool. he's, he's cute as a got a great personality. Yeah, that's and awesome. He's very inquisitive. Let's get it from his grandma. Yeah, so. <laughs> very friendly. Yes, yes. Lauren's on too. Yeah, Lauren's on. Matt says he takes one ice cube in his uh, J W Green. <coughs> Lauren this says is. Blanton's is good. Oh, it yeah. has more hype around it than it should, though. Well, yeah, it's getting almost into pappy territory. I agree. And, and you know what? And I say a hundred times, compare a bottle of Blanton's to a bottle of standard Buffalo Trace single barrel. I'll drink Buffalo Trace over any Blanton's anytime. <laughs> Sean is going a little crazy with the popcorn over there. something over there. You okay there, girl? <laughs> Why are you itching your ass? What are you doing over there? <laughs> She's blaming it on She's the four roses. She's enjoying some four roses over there. Oh, so that is. Oh, she yeah. finally pulled it out of the paper bag. That's she fine. wasn't going to try any Lafroy 18, but that's that's fine with me. 
to be fun for us. All right, so what's the uh, quote of the day, brother? Well, first, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page. If you've not done that already, you follow us on Facebook. And if you have questions or comments and you want to be a guest on the show, Jennifer, you can comment on Facebook or you can email us directly at thewhiskeyroundtable at gmail.com. And, um, you know, seriously, we so, also have good guests. So, so all you out there, and we do really appreciate you guys tuning in and watching us and, you know, it's those viewers that that you know help our numbers and help us keep doing what we're doing and right. and take this thing to the next level. So appreciate all of you out there. So yeah, Amen. and as you said in the beginning, we're going to be off the next two weeks, um, right. and then Chris is coming in on the 25th. But our first show back after being off 18th. will be the 18th. So yes. if you're interested, and you want to be on the show, we do have an opening right now. We don't have any no guests, guests for the scheduled. 18th. If so anybody's if, interested and. Um, you can pass our very detailed uh, interview process. Uh, yeah. Which. Um, Do you like whiskey? If okay, if go you ahead. Like whiskey. I think <laughs> that's the question we have. Well, anyway. I'd like to. Uh, maybe I'll see if uh, you know uh, Gary, who's very very diverse in uh, bourbons and whiskeys and scotches. I'd like to see if he'd come back on the show. Maybe I'll book him for that day. Yeah. So remember, the next two weeks we're off. We'll be back strong with uh, going back to some American whiskeys on the 18th of September. Um, I'm going on my annual Labor Day Wilderness trip. This year we're going to Montana and we'll nice. be canoeing, 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 canoeing down the, canoeing and doing. on the upper uh, Missouri River in Montana. So um, well, be careful. We'll, uh, we'll be watching out for rattlesnakes. Amen. So, closing quote, are we ready? I'm ready. I'm okay. Sure. That's it. So, this one comes from none other than the great W.C. Fields. We've had some of his before. He said, Once during Prohibition, I was forced to live for days on nothing but food and water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's my. all for this week. Oh, all right, fun. kids. <laughs> we'll see you in two weeks. Uh, be safe. Everybody have a great Labor Day weekend. Drink responsibly, and uh, we'll see you when we get back. Have a lot of fun. We'll see you on September 18th. All so right. long, folks. All see right. ya. Thanks for hanging. Have a Bye. good night. Bye-bye. Bye. If whiskey stopped working, every bar in town would be closing their doors, shutting down. Everybody would be trapped with their thoughts, because nothing Bourbon or scotch, oh no Oh no, no If whiskey, whiskey stopped working Where the hell would I be? Probably wasting lots of money Trying therapy If whiskey, whiskey stopped working What the hell would I do? Tell you the truth, I wouldn't be over you. Whiskey stop working, 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 whiskey stop working. Poor Jack D would be out of a job, Jameson and Bean would be cut off. the head.
this town, leaving Tennessee. If whiskey, whiskey stopped working.